Seku Ologwem, um, and um, he's an artist actually, an Islam poet uh, from Antwerp. And he speaks here also in the name of the colonized Belgium, which is a, you defined it, a social swarm that he co-founded. And it's, it is actually thanks to the colonized Belgium that, as I said before, the statue of Father de Decken currently actually has an informative plague that, let's say, contextualizes its um, story. Um, and the colonized Belgium um, promotes active citizenship and accurate image making, both in the minds of people and on the streets and public spaces and squares of the country. The colonized Belgium strives for equality between the inhabitants of Belgium by taking actions, writing texts, taking pictures, and initiating dialogues. Thank you for being here. So do you have a question? Do I introduce myself? What, what do I do? What, what do you guys want to hear? Maybe it's better to start from you guys. Uh, maybe it's best to just explain the colonized Belgium and myself, I guess. I'm not used to not getting the question. I'm just sitting here it's like, oh God, uh, I'm performing or something. I don't know. Um, well, we started the colonized Belgium. We didn't even start the colonized Belgium. We, we wanted to respond to that image, basically, because I've walked by it. I've done uh, an internship there. Uh, um, um, I was there a lot and I didn't even notice, I didn't even know. And then I read it in an article, I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. So I went there and I looked at it, it's like, oh, it's true. Um, I didn't even know. So I was like, okay, we have to respond around this. What can we do? We send the mail, we did a sit-in. Um, then we thought further, like a sit-in, we just went with artists there, put a speaker, put a mic, and just talk about it, have the, 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 the neighborhood involved, and get some media around it, get some attention around it, what's happening here. And then we, uh, that's the moment, actually, the districts got involved, from the moment you get media into it. And then um, we uh, sat together with Afrikaans Platform and Bambi Kepfes, we formulated the text, which we printed ourselves, gave them. They could just put it next to the statues, like, here you go, uh, no more excuses, here it is. Done the work for you. This is uh, 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 actually very formal because there's a lot of people backing this text. Maybe it's even, uh, it's an, uh, it's, it, to me, it's more formal and more justified than just having the, the, the Heemkundige Kring of Wilderijk do it. You have a text formulated by African Platform, by Bambi Kepes, by specialists basically who are very versed in the subject and they actually did use a, a, a large part of it um, and they put a plaque uh, uh, next n below the statue you really have to lean in and read it even with my glasses it's very hard to read because there's a fence it's very difficult but even before they put the plaque they already put an extra light on it on the statue itself so it's a very hard it's a difficult uh, it's always hard to have a conversation with uh, a structure um, to make them see like, hey, we are finding this offensive. And that's the moment where democracy works against you, I guess. Um, like, hey, this is, this is offensive to us. And they're like, yo, we need a democratic vote around it. We need 51% or something. Uh, I think it's very, I don't know if I can say this, but uh, I don't think, uh, I'm not sure if slavery would have been abolished if it was up to a democratic process. Um, I think when it comes to something, when you have, even if it's five, even if it's 2% of the people of a, of a population saying this is offensive to our group, this is really aggressive, and you can prove that, because it's not hard to prove that this is aggressive towards a, 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 a group of people, it, it sets certain trends and ideas, well then I think we should uh, deal with it a different way. You can't just say, hey, we need 51% to say no, I'm also finding it offensive. No, some people are really not involved in it, they're not knowing, they're not caring about it, but that's besides the point. If it's attacking a community, you do not want to give money, which is public money, to this statue or to this tradition or culture. We can just extrapolate this to other things. This is not just about the statue, it's about image forming. It's about, to me, 
personally, it's about Sinterklaas and Zwarte Piet. It's about uh, 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 how, how s other statues, how street names, how we glorify, uh, 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 how we glorify our chocolatiers, how we glorify our Leopold Twees, how we glorify many people who basically were, uh, have a very different opinion and very different vision on what equality and uh, racism is, basically. So it's, it's that's where we learned as a group, like, okay, it, it is very political. Uh, as an artist, uh, we're social, but not per se political. But when you go into the realm of activism, it becomes politi political directly before you walk up to that district, it's best to know what political party this person is associated with to actually already get an idea how he or she, mostly he, um, will respond to this. So that's something we learned. And also, like, it's good to yell. It's better to yell with media uh, uh, around it. It's good to be ludique, to be, like, to, to get a lot of people informed around it. Um, it it's not just... Um, there comes a, there's a lot that comes with it. It's not just this thing, it's always connected and not on a local level, on a national level, on an international level. There's always connection, there's always people doing this. This lecture will happen again tomorrow in a different country on a different side of the world. People are having this discussion constantly, but very like cells, they're like pop up and then they, 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 they bounce on a wave or something. And this is also like, how do we connect this? How do we get this open to ourselves also to just ask the question, decolonization, it's a process. It counts for everybody. It's not just, uh, uh, it's a question you ask yourself every morning, especially me as a man, I have to ask myself every morning, what does it mean to be a woman in this world? What does it mean to be uh, 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 different? Basically, how, how does that relate and how can I myself decolonize my mind as well uh, uh, to that exercise? So decolonize Belgium is not just about black and white, uh, uh, it's about gender, it's about haves and haves not. We try to pull it open and have the conversation with, with, with the public because that's what it's about. We try to not be dominant. We can also go there and smash the statue in the night with like a bivak mitzan, like a, I don't know, uh, 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 ski mask on, uh, that would be dominant. It would get a, point, po get a point across. It's probably a very good alternative if you're not being listened to. Um, but it defeats the purpose in a sense that um, I'm not trying to uh, answer dominance with dominance, have a conversation with it. But when it comes to defending yourself, it's a different thing. I, I, I'm really, that opinion is changing as well. Like, wait a minute, this is a slap in the face every day and nobody's doing anything around it, I can actually defend myself from it. I can actually say I don't want this in my image and nobody's responding to it. So even if I would smash it, be very dominant, but it'd still be a, a counter. It, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a defense mechanism, it's not an attack. So I'm, I'm a little bit in between there. I try to not be dominant, but at the same time, I'm also realizing that things are very slow. We are like really sporadically no subsidies, no structure, no, uh, 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 there's basically from any structure, there's no support and we're trying to challenge the status quo, we're trying to challenge structures, not just a structure, like not just structures, but a global, like a Western, basically global structure that has been built on this and you're trying to challenge that sporadically without any, like, not support, I'm not gonna say support, there's a lot of support, there's a lot of mental support, there's a lot of people backing this, but there's no structure, in a sense, and I think that is what is lacking, to really have, to be, to be busy with this on a daily basis, to be busy with this, to really have a view, to, to really research this, to put it down, to actually uh, uh, document it as well, uh, to. To, to make this knowledge as well, basically, to challenge the knowledge centers, I guess. So that is a very, a very, not difficult, it's not difficult. It's a very energy demanding task to do on top of the fact that you're already living, working, doing art and you have whole life going on. And on top of that, you need a full time just to point this out to people who are actually not enjoying, but benefiting from the structure, benefiting from saying no. 
at if I go to the district and I talk to I don't I don't even remember his name, uh, uh, the person we talk to, and just to see him standing there, to the, the feeling of I don't care. It really it I, I've, I've, I'm a public speaker basically. I've, this is my job. Uh, I'm a poet. It when I stood there and had to explain it, I fell short of words. Uh, I didn't know. I, I I really had a problem with the the. The whole way I was introduced, the whole way I sat there and what I was doing there, standing there saying this, the whole, the futility it, that was tossed at me, like, <laughs> like the laid back, like what are you trying to accomplish here, I'll just pat you on the back and you keep going. Uh, that how it felt and not getting out of my words, it was a very... This was an experience I'm never gonna forget. It didn't. It hasn't happened ev ever after again. It hasn't happened before. Actually, I've never choked. That's where I choked. Just to feel that and to see like how much energy and time you put into it to actually feel it get rubbed off. It's not in words. It's in a stance. It's in a look. It's in a a not repl not replying to something. Not asking a specific question. Just like okay, we'll take this up. We'll see what Will Rex says about this. Um, so that was quite hardcore. Um, we are trying to work with a, a swarm structure, basically, um, to have everybody has an opinion. And uh, we don't need to come together as a political party and say, yes, this is our opinion we are bringing out or something. No, if you're for equality, show it, prove it, do something around it, we'll try to support it. Um, uh, uh, everybody is part of this movement. If you want to do an action, if you want to uh, uh, post something, if you want something to get attention, you can actually uh, 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 put it on the page. Um, to work like that, but we should really structurize it in a sense. Um, but I think it's important, we all have our opinions, and we disagree in them as well, but the basic line is the same, we go for equality, like in a, in a broad term, right? Like, we're not all the same, but respect should be an equal experience for everybody or something. Um, that's basically what we're on, but that's the, well, that's an action we did and basically the only outside action we've ever performed, I think. The rest is solely online and talking and posting. Uh, Elizabeth Severina Fernandez, who is not here right now, she's also posting a lot. There's just people in general, uh, random, who, who contact us and like, hey, we're busy with this. What's your opinion on this? Who should I talk about this? Uh, um, uh, um, so that as well, a lot of debate, conversation, posting, awareness, but actual actions. After we did part of the deck, we're like, okay, we have a small victory here, basically. They're admitting something is wrong. They're admitting it needs to be contextualized. Okay, where are all the statues? We have to do it everywhere again. And they're like, wait a minute. It's even hard to get a list. <laughs> there is not even a list on... And I don't think you can list it up because how far do you go, right? We could just hold a sit-in at Central Station. We could hold a sit-in at, at, there's so many buildings and, and streets and statues and, and like institutions that are basically built on this. So how do you do this and how far does, how far reaching is it? And that's where we're like, okay, we need to do something again around part of the day and around this. Or, and then it just all loose, like uh, everybody's going everywhere, doing everything and nothing at the same time, working with this. A lot of organizations uh, 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 we, we become aware of, we didn't even know existed. Like organizations been doing this 10, 15 years before us uh, on the same thing. We didn't even know they existed. So we activate ourselves as well. We're like, okay, wait a minute. This is way bigger than, than, than initially thought. Um, so it's, it's, that's a little bit where we're at right now. Like we're just uh, trying to find ways and trying to activate and trying to uh, 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 motivate, make aware. But we are not doing enough. We need to get out there more often and be more loud, basically. Not per se loud, but we have to be creative. We don't have the means. We don't have the means, but what we have is truth reality on our side, we have uh, universal values on our side. They will not change, hopefully, universal values. Uh, so we have that on our side, so we need to think ludique in a sense, like how do we make aware if that's what we want to do? Um, so it's a little bit, like I've, I've really 
been confronted, we have really been confronted with how politics works and where the limit of democracy is or something. I, I have the feeling. It's like it's not just a fight against a global thinking, it's a more even a fight against the structure, how this is built up. It's really made very difficult, almost impossible, I would say, as a minority, as a small minority, to change something in a democratic way. It's, um, it's not built for that, I guess. So, yeah. Is there something I'm forgetting? <laughs> Ask me questions. <laughs> Give me some reference. Uh, <laughs> Yes, so, so you're saying like it is, well, to document it basically, it, it should be possible maybe there is one, a list with all the street names referring to uh, uh, statues, referring to colonialism or glorifying colonialism. Um, uh, uh, maybe there is one. Um, I, I, I don't know, we've been asking around, checking around, it's possible it exists, but even if it is there, it's... I'm, I'm just saying, like, h how is it looked at? Like, how, how far do you go? Because it's something you made me very uh, aware of. We've been banging on Leopold Twe, but what happened before, like, basically after, is the same continuation up to 1960. It's been more or less the same. Like, we talk about slavery and colonialism, but we're not talking about neo-colonialism, which is an extension of, 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 of the thing. Like, it's, it's a different way, it's a different form, but it's the same thing. Uh, uh, so that's like, okay, wait a minute, that's the danger of just looking in one symbol, or just, like, do we take the Leopold II streets, or can we actually look at the very colonial, very racist chocolate makers as well? Uh, look at uh, politicians to this day who are yelling like, yes, hooray for Leopold II, because he saved us, saved us from uh, going going uh, bankrupt, basically. Like, how far does this go? Like, if you take, can we take the whole park and say, like, all of this is put with the money of Leopold? Because then you take half of Ostend and then a big part of Brussels. How far do you go with this? There's people who created an app and just walk around with and see and learn the history around colonialism and how it refers. But I think in first essence, it's, it's good to take the symbols, but it needs to get us deeper. Uh, if we don't understand the history, we'll never be able to place this in, in, a, in a correct context. So we're talking about the statues and contextualizing whether you put them in a museum, well, take them out of the public space if it slaps somebody in the face, that's, that's a very simple thing. Um, but to contextualize, I think it really starts at school to just like, teach, teach something about colonialism. Uh, like if you haven't taught that you they don't teach it anywhere, basically. It's not been taught. And then we talk about, yeah, and if you take the statue away, then people don't know about it. And yes, that's absolutely correct. But it starts in school. Like, this is a very big part, not just of history, but how we relate to other people, to other groups. How, how like, basically make a four-hour history of oppression and just start with, this is how we started. We put the woman down, and that's 50%. And then we went further, and then we put everybody with color down, and then we went further, and we went to gender, and then we went there, and here's the history of the oppressed. And look how that relates. Look how when they put the women down there, this went up, and it started getting a more competitive world and more aggressive world. And This is a very a different aspect of looking at history, of looking at the world, of looking at yourself. And I don't think that's been done. And then we, we attack symbols, which is very good. It's almost the only way to do it, because it's that deep within. It's like interwoven. Like I can have the best friend. I can have a talk with a, like one of my best friends. 
like you know for 20 years but when it comes to colonialism or when it comes to like really taking responsibility and like looking like just talking about a, a guilt model of like wait a minute like all our wealth i'm saying our not saying there i'm saying our wealth as a westerner as even diaspora i'm from europe so when i go to africa i'm also european like, like, and it makes sense, and they are right to say this. Even if you're born in Ghana and you live in Europe, it changes the relationship, how you have it with Ghanaians and with Africans, because it is different. You are now part of this racist structure. Um, and to just see that and put that in perspective, it's not possible. And I'm talking people who went to school, they went to university, they're really versed on things. And, 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 and they understand struggles, but not that part. It's not possible to talk, of, talk about it with times. Like, hey, wait a minute, we're all part of a racist structure. Did you just call me the, 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 the Flemish N-word? Did you call me a racist? It's like, yes, I call myself a racist as well, but there's levels in racism. It is, to me, like we can discuss this, but there's levels in racism, there's levels in colonialism, there's, there's, there's different levels in it. And that is a very hard conversation, even with your best friends. Imagine having that with somebody who has, who has benefit in the structure, who is the status quo. Why would they question themselves? Just because some minority group, some 20 people here, artists, stand here with the media, okay, let's give a signal and then forget it very political, like, hey, we're gonna do this and then we forget it tomorrow. So it's, it's, I don't believe, I don't think so. I don't think I believe in uh, asking for stuff. 